OK, and finally, uh, playing us out at the end of the programme, we have music from, and I'm thrilled to hear the fantastic combination of Calvin Harris and Tiny Temper. Right. TMC. Gentlemen, let me just uh, clear one thing up, because you're collaborating together. Uh, you have a new single out. Uh, who is featuring whom? Is it uh, Tiny Temper featuring Calvin Harris, or is it a record by Calvin Harris featuring Tiny Temper? That one. <laughs> me featuring him. OK. And so uh, that is because you, you're in charge, you wrote it, you're the dominant part of the relationship, is that what it is? <laughs> um... Be careful. Uh, if, if, if you were in jail that. together, who would have the top bunk? That's what I'm asking. <laughs> <laughs> Tiny, you are okay on the bottom bunk. Is this what I'm hearing now? Is that? No, I've got to have the top bunk. Okay, well yeah. then it should be you featuring uh, CH. But it's actually Calvin featuring me. Okay, so he's got the top bunk. It's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> I like the look of you two together. I think you make a lovely couple. <laughs> Would you mind, just guys, just just humour me. Don't get. Oh, look at that body language now. <laughs> <laughs> God, Calvin, relax. I know you're from Dumfries, but you're down in the big city now. You thought Look, I was American earlier. I did, I did. Look, he's having a drink for confidence. Listen, Calvin. <laughs> would you spoon Tiny for me? No. What do you mean, no? Tiny, Tiny, would you spoon Calvin for me? I'm, I'm not tall enough. Come this, on. This is, this is as much as you're getting there. A bit of leg spoon, as well. There you go. Spooning them. <laughs> Well done. I promise you I will have them spooning by the end of the show. <laughs> uh, I'm thrilled you're here, and I'm also thrilled that my house band for the whole evening is the magnificent Richard Cheese and Lounge Against the Machine, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Martin. Martin. Cheers. Cheers. I don't have a martini glass, but cheers. All right, let's get my first guest out, ladies and gentlemen. He's the cheekiest chappy Essex has ever produced. Here he is, strutting his stuff in his latest video. Mr. Ollie Amours. You other brothers can't deny that when a girl wants in with an itty bitty waist and a round thing in your face, baby got back. Ollie Amours. Ollie Amours. Ollie Amours. Ollie Amours. Ollie Amours. Ollie Amours. What a handsome love young those man. Guys. Man, I like what you've done to your hair. It's, that's some <laughs> feat of architecture going on there. Oh, thank you. I definitely didn't do it, so thanks to Melissa. It looks uh, like, the, uh, it's like the Sydney Opera House you've oh, got going thank on you there. Very much. Uh, thank now, you. one impressive story. What a, what a life you had the last three years since you, uh, you enjoyed the success you did on The X Factor. Yes. Uh, and it's gone crazy for you. I imagine the life before that and leading up to that was very different to the life you're leading now. Very different, yeah. No, it has been a, an amazing three years for me. Um, but yeah, no, the, the, you know, the, probably about 22 years of it was pretty boring. Um, but three years prior to that was great. And, uh, Hold on, so we're getting really into the heavy, the maths now. So <laughs> how old were you when you uh, did X Factor? 25. 25, so up to 22, you considered boring? No, it wasn't boring, you know what I mean? It was just, you know, normal sort of stuff. Really. Well, like, well, like, what kind of jobs were you doing? I, I worked in, God, I did everything. I worked in call centres, I was a paper boy. I say, so call centres. Well, paper boy was presumably when you were young, not in your 20s. Oh, obviously not in the 20s. No. <laughs> you'd, have been, you'd have been a paper man. Paper. Um, <laughs> But the call centre, what were you selling? What were you trying I to sell? Used to, God, I used to sell everything. I, uh, one of the main jobs I had was I worked for, I worked selling kitchens. Okay, so you would, what, so cold to, call people? Just phone I them up the at cold, the room? Cold call, I, was, I loved it. I actually loved it. But how would people react? Did you ever manage to actually sell a kitchen? Yeah, though? lots. I sold lots of kitchens. How do you sell a kitchen? Well, so what do you, how do you persuade someone to buy a kitchen? I don't know. How, you just have someone that's having a good day and interested. Someone who's too lazy to go out to a kitchen shop. <laughs> and he's sitting in a real shithole of a we kitchen to, and you have the call. So I used to think, you know, if someone's ringing up and offering you 50% off, surely that's a good thing. Yes, but 50% off something you don't want to buy is not a great I thing. I know, but it, I loved it. It was a great job. I did How long it for did you time. do that for? God, I did it for I did it for three years during college. Oh, man, you must have liked it. I did love it, and it was good. Pay. It was really good pay. I used to get you know, place to pay my mum and my bills. So, did you sell a kitchen to anyone you know? No. Okay. Did you buy a kitchen yourself? No. So that's a very bad endorsement for the product. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so you moved on from that. Yeah, I moved on from that. I, um, I did recruitment. I was a recruitment consultant for three or four years. Okay, and what does that involve? That was, I used to, I used to get people jobs, getting warehouse jobs. What There's, kind of warehouse? Or high level warehouse skills? I used to needed? work with, we, I, some jobs were like jam factories, which I ended up working in eventually. So you liked it so much you kept that job for yourself? <laughs> 
if someone came in, you, what you got? And you go, well, there's... Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you... What, no, I... I what, I you just to... really like jam? Why did you want to no, work in the jam? No, I, I actually... I... Oh, it's all very kitchen-based as well, no, I can I, imagine. I, I, was in a, I was in a recruitment with someone, and then I, and then I went travelling. You went, to, I went but you went travelling after the jam or before the jam? Before the, before oh, the jam. No, before the jam, yeah. Okay. Um, but I had the most amazing time, lots of fun. I bet you did. When you say fun, you mean sex, of course. Oh. <laughs> My mum's watching, but yes, baby. I think she's figured out you've had sex by now, Ollie. <laughs> you've had a number one she, single. She warned me. She said, you're going on the Jonathan Ross show, you've got to be on your toes tonight. How old's your mum, by the way? She's probably about my age. She's, uh, I don't know, how, I can't tell my mum's age on TV. Well, roughly. I, I, I don't even know. Well, how, uh, you don't know how old your mum is? And yet you sing the praise of jam? <laughs> Maybe 49? She's about my age. She must find me quite hot. She, I, <laughs> I think she actually does, to be honest. I've got something to tell you. You know that man who's been saying he's your dad all those years? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you, Jonathan. So, X Factor. <laughs> yes. You're up there. Uh, you didn't get in the first time. No, I did. The, I, I applied for the show twice before I did the, wow. the one in so, 2009. So the first, first time, you, both times you were just sent home. Yeah, no, because I, I, obviously you know when you watch the show, the, you have to. There's, there's auditions before you see executives and producers yeah, yeah, and stuff. Yeah. So the first two times I just didn't get didn't get through. And, and were they right? Enough. Were they right not to put you through? Do you think in those early yeah, stages? Yeah, completely. I wasn't experienced enough. I didn't know. I did. I just did it because I saw the advert on the TV or on the mm -hmm. internet. And um, I just decided to go along and, you know, they obviously didn't like me. And then my mate actually said to me, you should go this year. And I was like, why? And he said, well, it's the over 25, it's always the roughest category. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, yes, I'll probably get through. Just had a chance. So the first, what were the first two songs you did? You um, the first that you one... you didn't get through with? The first song I did was um, Jungle Book. What? I did, uh, I want to be like, I want to be like you. <laughs> <laughs> no, did you... Uh, uh, I want to be like you, ooh, ooh. And then they were just like, oh, my God. Out. Next. <laughs> I mean, obviously, the X Factor is an audition, but it's, it's amazing. It's a massive competition. There's lots of people that go. I mean, 250,000 people apply for it every year or something. So. Uh, uh, but, and then you came second out of those 250, which is incredible. And you've yes. had a remarkable... When you came second, did you think, that's, oh, that's ridiculous, I got so close and I didn't pull it no, off? No, do you know what? I was just so grateful. <laughs> that, oh, yeah. I think we can see that's a special <laughs> moment. <laughs> It's like I, it looks like I've shat myself. <laughs> and yet Simon seems very pleased with that. <laughs> it was an amazing feeling to think that people were liking what I was doing, because generally I thought I was rubbish, you know what I mean? But let's talk about this, because you've had now, since then, you've had a number one album. Yep. You've had, is it three number one singles? Yep, three, three number, one, number singles. one singles. That's incredible achievement. Yeah, thank uh, you very much. And I've seen you perform live. I've seen you, I've seen Ollie do a little bit actually live. Great performer. You really, uh, you really engage with the crowd. You seem to really love being up there. Well, I mean, that's, to be honest, they're, they're the reason I'm here, you know what I mean? And, and we go back to the X Factor, people vote for you on the show, so I always feel, and, and any, I'm, I'm sure any artist is the same, you know, people pay money to come and see you perform or yeah. come to see you perform live and gig, so I think it's only right that you connect with them and have a laugh and enjoy it. So. You have fun. Now, you're, uh, you, know, you have a, a great career now. I know the career you wanted when you were a kid, and a lot of young men feel this way, was you wanted to be a footballer, you wanted to be a professional I wanted footballer. to be. I wanted to be the next David Beckham, that was my... Did you have the skills? Did you have the ability? I was a decent think? player. I mean, I've, I've, lucky enough, since I've, done, since I've got famous and, and done music and stuff, I've got opportunities to play football, because obviously I played at Soccer Aid and stuff like that with... You know, with Robbie Williams. With pros, and that. But you, you were pretty good, weren't you? Until you had, did you have an injury when no, you had a really injury? bad. I was, uh, I had a really bad. Um, oh, what was it? I broke my medial, my medial ligament in my, in my cruciate ligament in my knee. And it was the most random injury. I was just running along and my knee just buckled behind me. It just snapped behind. Mm. And um, I remember I had to go around this girl's house that night afterwards, like to drive around there. And, it just ballooned out of control. When you say you had um, to, what do you mean you had well, no, to? Well, we, no, I arranged to meet, I arranged to meet up with her, so I had to so drive around. You knew you were, you were on a sore thing. There. You weren't going to give it up just because you snapped your leg in half. No, I was. I was, I was so you like, didn't think about her still, feelings that still... you can't get your jeans down over your swollen, <laughs> grotesque, gangrenous knees. <laughs> <laughs> and you say, never mind that, darling, turn out the light. Yeah. Uh, um, but no, but you I, couldn't drive. I couldn't drive around, and when I got there, my knee just ballooned, and I literally walked in said and I had to go. It was horrible. It was so bad, it ruined my foot. And that was the reason I got into music at the time, because that was when it all went. I was loving you football. You that was that. all I wanted to do. Then I decided to do music. But, um, but you can run again now? Yeah, I'm fine now. I'm happy. I can run and so do So Soccer Aid sounded like it must have been great fun. Who, who were you playing with? Who did you meet on that? Oh, God. Um, I met loads of people. Um, who were the footballers, first of all? Football players, we met um, Roy Keane, okay. which was incredible. 
and um, which was one of my idols. He's quite an angry fellow, isn't he? Working well, I actually, yeah, very angry, because all week I was bantering with him on the changing grounds. I was walking, running down, I was going, all right, Roy, you all right, son, you all right? He's like, yeah, yeah, I went, looking forward to the game Saturday. He goes, yeah, yeah, I said, oh, I said, oh, I said, you know, I said, oh, you know, one of the sort of banner is, oh, you're not going to get nowhere near me, Roy. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was thinking, why am I even saying this to Roy Keane? Yeah, yeah. And then we was walk in the tunnel before the game, and we're just about to walk out Old Trafford, and Roy comes up to me, and all week I had my knee bandaged just to keep it sort of secure. And he goes, how's your, how's your knee, Ollie? I said, yeah, it's all right. He says, we'll see. <laughs> It was, it was one of them, it's one of them stories I tell down the pub to the boys all yeah. the time. It's great. Uh, Ollie has a book out. I don't, do I have the, yeah, here I've got the book here. Thank it's, you. Uh, it's called uh, Ollie Was Happy Days. It's a fun book. Uh, but you didn't write it, did you? You kind of dictated it. No, we it. do a ghost writer, Martin, and um, it, it's not an autobiography. I hope people ask that. It's just literally the last four or five years of my life and okay. the experiences I went through before the X Factor and after. It's obviously got lots of pictures in it Loads as well. of pictures. Your fans want to see uh, pictures. Some of the pictures the, are the quite girls, revealing based the on the story. Which like. Yeah, let's have a look at one or two of the pictures here. Yeah, how that you look younger there than you do here. That looks like it was about five years ago. Is that no, recent? No, that picture? was recently in my house. So I was just getting ready and they took a picture. <laughs> there you oh, go. Okay. God. Now that, oh, that was not for this book. That was Heat magazine, wasn't it? Yeah, it was Heat magazine. Okay, so I... what's the story behind this uh, picture? No, here? that was actually, that was when our first single came out. Please don't let, please don't let me go came out. And um, I said to the newspapers that, um, uh, well, the magazine, I said, if it go, because I was up against Katy Perry and I thought, there's no way I'm going to get number one. So I said to her, the woman was joking, I was flirting with this news reporter and she just went, what would you do if you got number one? I said, oh, get naked for you in your magazine. She's like, really? She's shaking it. I said, yeah, yeah, shaking it. My management team were like, what are you doing? And then literally went to number one and I was like, no, we, uh, quick, press ups. <laughs> so I, I quickly... Well, we, we have the, I mean, it's obviously a fine display and we have the hat that Ollie used in that <laughs> photograph. Yeah. And as you can see... <laughs> See, that's not, that wouldn't cover. A okay. perfect fit, thank you. Oh, that's a not bad little hat. You put it on, let's have a look at it. Jeez, look at that. Wow. <laughs> no, that reminds doesn't... me, there's a bar mitzvah this weekend I've got to go to. <laughs> Brilliant, thank you. Well, great fun seeing you. And later on, I might get you out here because I think we might be trying to do something in the, the show. Okay, I'm so here. if you're game for it, we will be seeing you again. Ladies and gentlemen, for now, though, Ollie Moores. Oh, he's got Ollie, that was great. Stay put, stay put. All right, Lee. Uh, don't go away, because after the break, I will be joined by Melissa George. Frankie Boyle is coming up, and we have more music from Richard Cheese, and he'll be playing their homage to Radiohead. So don't go anywhere.